So surprise, I am not Pastor Anthony. (laughs) Um, I am Leah Pickett, and I give much honor to Pastor Anthony and Pastor Brenda for this tremendous honor and privilege to be trusted to give the word of God to our celebration family and honor to my amazing husband and my awesome boys, Jalen and Jason. You'll always hear them. No matter where we are, you'll hear them. Um, But whose love and support allows me to to do this. Um, And so I'm grateful. And speaking of my boys, you hear Pastor, oh, please, please have a seat. I'm sorry. (laughs) Yes, have a seat, have a seat. Um, You know, Pastor Anthony shares his adventures with his Princeton. And every story resonates so deeply with Julius and I, because we have a version that's just like him. Same age and height, everything. His name is Jason. Now he's our baby boy, calls, I call my munchkin. And of all the adventures that we usually have with my munchkin, um, there was this one thing that really actually impressed me about munchkin. Um, that little boy knows how to make his request known unto his parents. He is a master advocate, right? So it's summertime and they're all from school and Julius and I both work at home. And so when they're not in camp, we have to have this talk. And it's the, all right, boys, mommy and daddy are downstairs doing our work. So we need you to be upstairs, quiet, quiet, play nice, don't hurt each other. We have the same talk. It's a script. We go through it every time. And in just as much time as it takes to share the story, it is that fast that we hear bang and crash and sounds like they're coming through the ceiling at any moment. And Julius and I look at each other, he pretends like he's working so he don't have to address it. And uh, it's usually me, boys, come here, come here, come here, come here. Come running down the stairs, they stand side by side. And I start with the script, buddies, buddies, then I tell you, you have to be quiet. Yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. And before I could get to the reinforcing of the story, this little one, Mommy, mommy, I'm sorry, we're sorry. We're sorry we were loud. Can we go outside and play? (laughs) Big cheesy grin. And now my older son, Jalen, he's been here a little while, so he's reading the situation. He's kind of tapping him on the back like, but it don't stop that little one. Nope, grin gets even bigger. And he is fully confident that he's going to get an affirmative response to this request because his smile gets bigger and bigger with each moment waiting to hear what I have to say. And so I I thank him for apologizing. And I think to myself, you know what? That's a pretty viable solution. hundred other things can go wrong, but you know what? Sure, go outside. I holler, take care of your brother. It's a whole nother message. Um, But later I was was intrigued about this exchange. And so I go to my oldest one. I'm like, buddy, when I asked earlier, you know, um, when your brother asked earlier about going outside, you seemed a little hesitant. He's like, yeah, I didn't think it was a good time. Why not? Well, we were loud and you told us not to. So I asked, did you think I would say no? Yes, ma'am. Don't ask questions you don't want answers to, right? And I thought about that. He didn't want to ask for something good because he perceived they had done something wrong. So then I got really curious. Well, what, why didn't that stop the little one? So I asked him, buddy, earlier, you guys were loud, but you still came and asked to go outside. Yes, ma'am. How come? Because you're mommy and you love me. Because you're mommy and you love me. Made all the sense in the world that a young child would look to his loving parents to give them the things that they want. And then I thought about myself. Do I always go to God with the things I want, with the things I need? Especially if I think maybe I did something wrong. 
So it got me thinking and reflecting. And as a result, here we are, right? So if you don't mind joining me on this journey with the message title, What's Stopping You? And we're going to look at this question from two lenses. First, what's stopping you like me? And by you, I mean me. (laughs) What's stopping you from going to God at times? And the second, what's stopping you when, when you go to God but maybe don't get the results that you were hoping for? When I thought about the times, and I'll be very transparent, what are the things that stops me from going to God? Well, the first thing is usually, well, what have I done that I think this isn't a good time? I can't ask God to help me with this because I just did that. There's no way (laughs) I can ask him to fix this because I caused it. How do I ask him to fix it? I can fix it myself. How do I ask God with the way I'm thinking, with the way I'm thinking, right? But the Bible says in Hebrews 4, 14 through 16, that we're to cling to him and never stop trusting in him because he already knows what we've gone through, what we're going through, what we're going to do, right? He understands our troubles, our trials, our temptations, and yet still says, come boldly to my throne of grace. And there we receive mercy and grace when we need it. Yet sometimes I still don't. So I had to ask the question, what's stopping me? When we consider what is stopping us from going to God, from asking him what we want or need, the first question is, did we even ask? It may sound simple or even obvious, but if you're taking notes, our first point is, you have to ask. James 4 and 2 says, you do not have because you do not ask it of God. It's like being at the beach and wanting to be refreshed, but you're still standing in the sand, not even getting in the water. So what's stopping you? What's stopping us? I just shared that God told us to come boldly to his throne of grace, but I'll be the first to raise my hand and say, sometimes I feel ashamed to go before God. I feel guilty about the things I've said or done, or I feel an invisible weight on my ankle dragging, holding me from coming boldly before his throne. But despite how I've felt, Jesus says in Romans 8 and 1, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Well, that should be good news. But there's that one part that says that do not walk according to the flesh. Well, again, what if I was in my flesh? What if I was all the way in my flesh? Or like Pastor Anthony described, our BC days. (laughs) There are times where I felt like those things would, Stop me from coming to God. But 1 John 1 and 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now that's fabulous news. That is shouting news right there, right? So if what's stopping me is feeling guilty, is feeling shame, feeling condemnation, If what's stopping me are the voices of the enemy reminding me, he's the accuser of the brethren. He loves nothing more than to put in front of us all the things that would remind us, how dare you go to God with those things? That is all answered with, if we confess, 
our sins. He is faithful and just. So God understands it. So what do we do? Okay, Lord, here I am with what you already know. Forgive me, wash me clean. And now, now we're ready, right? Uh, But Leah, you just said, if he already knows about it, why do I have to tell him? I'm so glad you asked. Because the point of this is asking shows our humility. When we humble ourselves and go to God, fully transparent with him about what we've done, said, thought, and felt, we are telling him, I need you. I depend on you. I cannot do this on my own. When we ask God, we're acknowledging that he alone is our answer and that we need him to do what we cannot do in our own strength. We humble ourselves by laying aside our willfulness and our worry and determine to obey him. Because if he said, come boldly, that's not a request. (laughs) So when we go to God like this, it builds our relationship. And spoiler alert, that is what this whole message is about. How do we build our relationship with God? How do we grow in our relationship with him? How do we lean in closer to not just be what he's called us to be, but learn him even deeper? Jeremiah 33, three says, call to me. And I will answer you and tell you and even show you great and mighty things, things which have been confined and hidden, which you do not know and understand and cannot distinguish. What? Who doesn't want that? (laughs) You're going to tell me things that are hidden. You know how special you feel when somebody tells you a secret? Let me tell you something. Don't tell nobody else. What about when God tells us secrets? And what secrets could he possibly tell us? What hidden things do we want to know about our lives that only he knows? Matthew 7, 11. If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? God wants us to come to him. If I'll let my boys run outside and tear up their bikes, how much more will our heavenly father give us those things, those hidden things, those secret things? So what's stopping you? Point two, you have to do your part. We have a part to play. Every relationship has its roles and conditions. And our relationship with God is no different We know that God is all-knowing and all-present and all-powerful, but that doesn't mean that he's the only one that does the work. You wouldn't want to be in a relationship with someone where all they do is receive from you. Think about your closest relationships, your spouse, your significant others, your children, your BFFs. It's mutual. They do their part and you do your part. As a matter of fact, when the relationship is really good, both of you are working really hard to make it work. If we're really serious about getting closer to God, we have to do our part. And that's spending time in his word, getting to know him through his word, talking to him, hearing those secrets from him and allowing his word to transform us. Now, I know that last part might not be the the shouting part. Transform. Stay with me. I promise it's all good. The Bible gives us clear instructions on how to ask God for anything. But we have to do our part. So what does that look like? Let's look at Mark 11, 24. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Now that scripture excites us. That is our go-to prayer scripture. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, you said, if I believe anything, I receive it in the name of Jesus. Yes, amen. Yes, and. (laughs) 
Jesus begins this verse by saying, therefore, meaning we need to read ahead of it to find out what it's there for. What is our part? In getting to know God, we have to know all his word in context, right? So we can benefit from it. So let's examine this in context. So Mark 11 begins with the Sunday of the week Jesus is going to be crucified. And verses 1 through 11 describes his arrival in Jerusalem and the Hosanna, Hosanna. And four days later, not the kind of friends we want. Now they shout crucify him. Um, But verse 12 starts with the parable of the fig tree. And it's a parable in action. But here's the here's the Cliff Notes version. Jesus is riding into Jerusalem to begin the Passover festival. And on his way to the temple, he gets hungry. Think about the times. He's on a donkey. It's long. He gets hungry. I carry snacks. Uh, He sees a fig tree and it's covered with leaves. And so he goes to get figs from it. But he couldn't find any because it was too early in the season for figs. So Jesus cursed the fig tree. No one shall ever eat of you again. That's a bit harsh. Was Jesus hangry? (laughs) One translation said he doomed the tree. Why? The fig tree didn't do its part. Fig trees bloom twice a year in late spring and early fall. If it's Passover, that means it was early spring. The leaves on the tree should have only been budding, but this tree was full of leaves. The significance of this is that the figs also grow with the leaves. So what angered Jesus about this tree? It had an appearance of fruitfulness, but it was barren. It wasn't doing its part. It looked fruitful on the outside but it was fruitless on the inside. Are we doing our part? As believers, do we have all the form and fashion of Christianity when we can come into this wonderful sanctuary and we can lift our hands and we can bow our heads and if the organ get going good, we can even do our praise dance, but then we walk out of these doors and nothing else has changed. Where is the power Monday through Saturday? It's not enough to confess Mark eleven twenty four 24 and expect God to move if we haven't done our part. Are we fruitful? Are we growing in the Lord so his power can flow through us so that when we ask and believe, we will receive In addition to understanding what happened before verse 24, we can't ignore what it says after because verse 25 starts with and. Mark 11, 25. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them so that your father in heaven may forgive your sins. There are conditions. We have our part. We can't start with all the asking and not get to know him, not spend time with him. When you think about those relationships, they didn't happen overnight. They took time. You know what that person likes. You know what they don't like because you spent the time getting to know them. And when they do their part, you do yours. So what's stopping us? Are we holding unforgiveness in our heart and want God to answer our prayers? Are we not spending our time and want to come boldly expecting? Are we fruitless and not growing? Is there that thing that you know the Holy Spirit has been talking to you about? And it's, I'll get to it, Lord. If we want God to do his part, we've got to do ours. So what's stopping you? Point three, your request must align with God's will. So let's look again at Mark eleven twenty four, 24, but this time in the Amplified. 
For this reason, I am telling you, whatever things you ask for in prayer, in accordance with God's will, believe with confident trust that you have received them and they will be given to you. Are you praying according to God's will? Are we asking God for the things that we know he wants for us? And maybe let's back up. How Do we know his will in all things? And how do we get to know it? Romans 12, 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. So he gives us the answers to the test. We learn his will when we renew our minds. How do we do that? In his word. And he said, not just by reading it, being transformed by it. Now that's another bit of work on our part because transformation always begins on the inside. We have to do the work on the inside to see external results. When we spend time in God's word, he promises in Psalm 32 and 8, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. He doesn't make it hard for us at all. He promises right there, you come to me, I will teach you. You call on me, I will answer. When we do our part and spend time in the word and spend time talking to him and just being in his presence, in his presence is fullness of joy and pleasures forevermore. I want joy. I want pleasures in his presence. He instructs us and teaches us his will. Then our minds are transformed and then we surrender our will. It transforms into his will. So how do we pray according to his will? Well, through this process, our will becomes his will. We want what he wants. We love what he loves. We don't want to do anything that won't please him. Then he'll trust what we ask for because he now knows. They know my will. The closer we get to God and the deeper we get into our relationship with him, the more we want what he wants. Are we spending the same quality time with God that we are in our earthly relationships? Amen. Let's peel back one more layer. What's stopping you? You may be in a close relationship with the Lord and you spend time with him. You know his will. You know his word. You have your prayer time. And you know it's his will for us to be healed. You know children are a gift from the Lord. It's his will for us to be fruitful and multiply. Amen. He said, he who finds a wife finds a good thing. Yeah. I'm a good thing. <laughs> it's his will that man should not be alone. Right? So we're spending our time. We have our relationship. We know God's will. What happens when the healing doesn't come? When the spouse we're believing for doesn't come? When the baby doesn't come? When we've been praying and believing and we have our prayer circles standing in agreement for the new promotion, not only do we not get it, we lose our job altogether. When he said we should live a long, strong life and we still lose that loved one. What about Psalm 37, 4? It says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires and petitions of your heart. Is it not God's will for those things to happen? Yes, of course it is. And I'll be the first to raise my hand and remind God of all these wonderful promises when they don't happen. Ecclesiastes 8 and 6, it explains for there is a proper time and procedure for every matter, though a person may be weighed down by misery. What is Solomon telling us here? That God's time is not always our time. 
His timing is far better. And he understands that though we might feel brokenhearted, this is not the time to move away and for me, throw my tiny fist in the air with the God you promised. But to remember that loving arms of a heavenly father who says, I know more than you, my daughter. We operate with limited information, with finite knowledge, but he's all knowing and he knows all things. If you're a parent, you think about things that your children ask of you. You tell them no, because it's not going to work out well. If you say yes. On your job, for those of you that might be in supervisory positions and you have to tell your team no, because you know something else is coming down the pipeline. And it might not be no, just not now, not yet. What about the relationships in our past? We pray, God, this is him. This is the one, Lord. We're glad he said no. Because now we have the answered prayer. Let me be specific. God knows what we don't know. And because he loves us so much, sometimes no is love in action. 1 John 5, 14 gives us a clear understanding. This is the remarkable degree of confidence which we as believers are entitled to have before him that if we ask anything according to his will, that is consistent with his plan and purpose, he hears us. That is the key qualifier, consistent with his plan and purpose, not Leah's plan and purpose, not your plan and purpose, with his plan and purpose. When we know that we know that we know, we believe in our knower, that his plans and purposes for us are good and not of evil. When we know that we know that we know he works all things together for our good. When we believe with the rising of the sun that no good thing will he withhold from us. When we wake up with the confidence that says he'll make even my mistakes to work out for me. That when we get a not now Uh or not yet or not this, we will yet praise him. We will thank him even for the unanswered prayer. And I'll say what appears to be unanswered because he said in his time, right? John 15, seven, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, that is if you are vitally united and my message lives in your heart, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. What's stopping you? That's a powerful Descriptor, vitally united with me. And my message lives in your heart. That's our part. When we ask ourselves, what's stopping you? When God says, not yet, not now, not this. I'll close with this last point. You have to keep asking. Luke eleven nine. 9. So I say to you, ask and keep on asking, and it will be given to you. Seek and keep on seeking, and you will find. Knock and keep on knocking, and the door will be open to you. You see the same text in Matthew 7, 7. Ask and keep on asking, and it will be given to you. Seek and keep on seeking, and you will find. Knock and keep on knocking, and the door will be open to you. So important that he said it twice. John 16, 24, until now... You have not asked the Father for anything in my name, but now ask and keep on asking and you will receive so that your joy may be full and complete. Now this context is king. Who was Jesus talking to when he said, ask and keep on asking? So when he said, you've not asked anything of the Father in my name, he was talking to the disciples because he was about to go. He didn't have, they didn't have to ask of God in Jesus' name. Jesus is standing here. That would be weird, right? 
But because he ascended and he went to the Father and he tore that veil and gave us the same access that he has, he now gives us this promise that says, when you ask in my name, ask and keep asking. What is God inviting us to do here? Why keep asking if he says, not now, not yet, not this? to show our complete and utter dependence on him as the only answer to whatever we're asking and whatever we need. When we do our part, when our relationship is growing and we're leaning into him and we know his will, he can trust that when we ask and keep asking, we're asking the things that he wants for us and we're expressing to him that we trust in his time, he will bring it to fruition. I want to make sure we understand in good context when he says, ask and keep on asking. We're not asking as beggars. No, no, no. We're king's kids. We're king's kids. We're not asking because we don't believe he's going to do it. No, no, no. Vocabulary means something. Asking in this context is that we are surrendering to him, that we are laying out before him that he is the only answer. We ask our heavenly father because we trust and believe that he is the way. We ask and believe because we believe in his love for us. Father, I know that you love me and because you love me and it is your desire for me to have this thing. Lord, not my will, but yours be done. And in your perfect timing, Father, I know that you've heard me and you've already answered me. When we live a fully surrendered life to God, we trust and believe that he's working all things together for our good. It is necessary for us to remember that it's not up to, it's up to God how, it's not up to us how and when he answers us. It may not be on our schedule, but it will be according to his plans and purposes. And those are always good. All he wants is for us to come in prayer and faith and in humility to put our trust in him, knowing that he knows what is best for us. And when we get a not now, a not yet, or a not this, that we will continue to stay in his presence, that we will lean in even closer to know him even more, to pour out our love to him and keep asking because we know that he has a higher and greater purpose and that he will achieve whatever it is that we need in his beautiful time. That we're not stopped because we trust him, because we believe in his love for us. So what's stopping you? Is God calling you off the sand and into the water? Have there been some moments where, no God, this is too much. Well, we've settled today. He said, tell me, I got that settled. Confess it. It'll be as far as the east is from the west in my memory, thrown into a sea of forgetfulness. Just come. What is stopping you from running into the loving arms of our heavenly father? If it's hurt or pain, he said, bring that to me. Cast your cares upon me, for I care for you. There's nothing too hard for him. There's nothing that we've done that we can't lay at his feet and receive the washing to cleanse us whole, to remove the hurt and the pain, the guilt of the past. What is stopping you from drawing nigh into his wonderful, marvelous plans for your life? Do you need to keep asking? Have you stopped along the way? You know what? I guess that's just not God's will. Is it? Have you asked? 
Have you sat down and talked with them about the things? Reflect on these questions and ask yourself, what's stopping me? When the voices of doubt, worry, or guilt creep in, what's stopping me? And whatever stopped you before, today is your day of breakthrough. Boldly come unto his throne of grace and say, not today, no more. I'm not going to be stopped. I'm not going to be stopped. I want to pray for you about the things that might be stopping you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for reminding us how much you love us and just want us to come and be with you, to hear of the things, the plans, and the good things that you have for us. But Father, some of us have been stopped. The things of our past and the weight on our heart, disappointments, heartbreak, have stopped us. But Father God, you're, you're more powerful than all those things. And in your name, Father God, we can come boldly to you and say, help, Lord. Father God, we thank you that your precious Holy Spirit lives in us as our comforter, as an advocate. Stir up in us, God, the fire, the desire to come back to you, to come closer to you, to lean into you. Father God, you want so much for us. Help us, help us to release the things that keep us entangled and encumbered. Let today be the day that nothing stops us. Father God, move in the hearts of your children. And we thank you. We thank you for closer relationships with you. Thank you for breakthroughs in our prayers. Thank you, Father God, that your will is being done. In Jesus' name. Well, family, thank you guys so much for worshiping with us today. My name is Pastor Anthony. Uh, me and my wonderful wife, Pastor Brenda, we have the awesome opportunity to pastor this place called Celebration Church. Come on, church family, can we put our hands together? Hey, maybe you're a first time guest. We wanted to say thank you so much for choosing to worship with us today. And we're gonna stay in this posture of worship with the bringing of our tithes and the giving of our offering. And here at Celebration Church, we have many ways that you can give. We always love to say that these ways are safe and secure. All of the information is right on the screen for our online family. You can click on the description box and you can give via that way. But I, I love Pastor uh, Leah Pickett message. Getting ready to call her Pastor Leah. But I love her message about unstoppable. It reminds me in, in John 3, 16 family where, where Jesus said, God, God so loved the world that he gave, come on somebody, that he gave, that he gave to his only begotten son. Thank God that God giving wasn't based on just a condition, but thank God that God's giving was rather based on a commitment. So even when I think about when I'm living a life of generosity, I'm making sure that in every season, my giving here to this family is not based on a condition, but it's based on a commitment. And as long as we be like God and live a life of generosity, that we don't measure our giving based on the condition, but we measure our giving based on our commitment. And it says God started the cycle, come on somebody, that we can enter into the cycle and we give with our time, we give with our treasure, and even for this moment right now, we give with our, our treasure. And that's the beauty of living a life of generosity that God gave. So even for now, for our tithes and offering, let us live a life, church, of continuing to make a difference. Why? Not based on a condition, but based on a commitment. Let's pray over the offering. Father God, we love you. We honor you. We lift up this offering towards you. And as you always do, Lord God, you bless it. That you, that you multiply it, Lord God. That you can see all of the needs that's in the area. That you can see all of the needs that's globally. Thank you for continuing to use Celebration Church as a vehicle to bless others. As we lift it up towards you, Lord God, we ask that your hand of covering be among it. Bless it in the name 
of Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody shout amen. Amen, amen, fam. And I got one announcement for you, and I'm super excited, as we mentioned last uh, Sunday. Come on, this is a month of serving. Yeah, this is a summer of serving, and we have some incredible opportunities for you and your family to join in. Come on, you see our pretty cool shirts that we have up here. But Serve Saturday, and Serve Day is coming right up, and this is one way for you can, to be a part of, of serving our community. As you guys can see with the information that's on the screen for our online family, you can click on the link, but we're going to have many opportunities for you and your family to join us and make a difference in the community. So be sure to, to scan the QR code, get all of the information. We will hope to see you, but come on family, turn to your neighbor, matter of fact, and say, hey, I hope to see you on this coming Saturday so we can make a difference. Amen. 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 So it's going to be an awesome sound. I love the impact that we're making here of joining together, being generous not just with our treasure, not just with our talent, but also being generous with our time. Amen? Amen. Let me um, do the benediction prayer over you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace throughout all of this week. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Come on, family. Say amen. Amen. Love you guys so much. See you next Sunday.